smart people focus on optimizing at the top, at the bottom of the funnel, and that's where the margins are made. Reducing card abandonment. Fun fact: I don't make this thing up. Uh, Seventy percent of the people visiting your website are leaving. Check your analytics. It looks something like this. All right. A few other things that we see on Optin Monster: first time add to carts, about eighty-five percent of people don't finish the transaction. That's why returning visitors are six times more likely to actually make a purchase. So we have like several solutions that we're using in our own businesses, advising really, really large companies um, on fixing their funnel so they can increase their revenue overall. Exit intent pop-ups show up only when you're about to leave, um, can give you a 2 to 7% uplift. Looks something like this. This is the one we're using on Optin Monster. Converts really, really well. 4.7% of the people who are actually looking at this uh, pop-up convert um, send us an email. And then uh, one out of three of those actually end up buying. Tons of them, tons and tons of case studies uh, you'll find across the board. There's a reason why you're seeing more and more of these on e-commerce sites, because they pure and simple work. Live chat. Um, how many of you use live chat on your sites? Awesome. So. Those of you who know or are, and are using live chat, you know it significantly improves conversion. One of the biggest barriers to entry in live chat is the cost to having, in, having a live chat agent on, in your company, especially if you want to offer 24-7. Now you're looking at multiple staff members. So we found a company called LTV Plus. Um, they pretty much give us outsourced live chat agents for pre-sales, only pre-sales, not technical support, nothing else, only answering uh, pre-sales questions. And they charge like $380 a week per agent. We know that every person who talks to your agent, 11 times higher conversion rate. So if you have an e-commerce store, live chat, having live chat, not just on your checkout pages, pricing pages, every page, product pages, you have the answer to your product, what it does. But people still have that question, and they're going to leave because we don't like reading. So having that live chat widget is is a game changer. It's been a game changer for us. Um, one of the things that we use uh, is card abandonment emails. I call them magic recovery emails uh, they, because they, it's pure and simple work. As the user is checking out, they're typing the stuff in. We save that user. Uh, if they don't finish the transaction, they get an email after the first 30 minutes. Then they get another reminder email the next day and another one after that. And if they don't convert, then we pretty much discard their email address. Uh, because we don't want to spam them. Uh, we recovered 55% of lost revenue, and we continue to use this solution across all of our properties. You guys might have seen a sponsor here, uh, Jilt. They offer this service, so if you have not talked to them, go talk to them. It, I see it as free money, guys. Uh, if you're not doing this, you're losing money. You pay them whatever their, their fees are is negligible um, to the amount of money that you're actually going to make. All right? So Jilt, uh, card abandonment emails. Have multiple payment options. Don't just have credit card or PayPal or something else. Have whatever your users are interested in. So we offer multiple payment options across the board. We actually did a test, removed PayPal, lost 20% of our sales. Some people just prefer to pay with PayPal and not credit card. So we offer both. Um, in broader e-commerce, some people are using Amazon payments. Some are using Apple Pay. Use whatever your users are interested in. Comscore studies show that 56% uh, of online shoppers actually prefer to have multiple payment options. If you don't have that, you're going to miss out. Remove all that's not needed. Oftentimes, our checkout page, cart pages, have too much crap on it. Um, if you notice that we, our footer is pretty simplified right here, only terms and service and privacy links, no other site links. Header also has no other links. Um, it just has a logo because there's only one goal on this page for you to buy. And of course, there's a live chat thing that that's there if you have any questions. Look at the heat map um, of, of that page. See what users are actually doing. These two tools really help you do that. Um, see how far there's somebody scrolling. If, if you have people leaving your card page and they're scrolling only 20% of the thing, maybe you want to add something there. What can you add? Trust and social proof. One of the main reasons why we don't buy things on an on a e-commerce store is because we have objections, some kind of objections. Maybe, is this, are these people trustworthy? Do they even know what the hell they're doing? Um, is my information safe with them? So you can overcome all of that with different social proof, 
um, and like trust deals. One of the things that we do is testimonials. Showcase a success study, right? Right there, Mike Stelzner. In seven months, added 95,000 subscribers. Last minute, somebody adds something in the card and it's like, well, is it really worth paying like a thousand bucks a month? Is it really worth paying, you know, 40 bucks a month? Whatever it is. Showing the trust symbols overcomes that objection. FOMO notifications. How many of you have seen this? You go on a website, a notification comes up that says, so-and-so just bought this. So-and-so just bought this. This is only going to increase, right? The travel booking companies like Booking.com and others figured this out years before. Now the rest of the e-com space is figuring this out. And they're like adding this fear of missing out notifications triggers the impulse buyers. The impulse buyers that were previously going to leave your site, now they're going to convert. Two tools that offer this service, useproof.com and usefomo.com. Really, really good software. You can combine this with just about any lead generation, any card abandonment techniques. These things work. Overcome objections with trust seals, right? Any popular e-com site you're going to go, you're going to have trust seals by Norton, McAfee, what have you. Put those on a site. This stat shows, you know, in conversion increased by 42% for Blue Fountain Media. Is this going to work for me? What if it doesn't work? Am I going to get my money back? Have a refund policy or have a free trial? One of the two. You have to have that. And that's why you'll see a lot of the infomercial. If this doesn't work out, we'll give you all your money back, right? They've been doing that since, the, since basically the invention of infomercial because it works. It overcomes that last objection that you have whenever, whenever you buy something, right? Anytime you remove this, your conversions are going to go down. Anytime you add it, your conversion is going to go up. Have guest checkout. A lot of times, we don't want to give and create accounts. Enabling guest checkout or single sign-on with Facebook and Google are always, always, always going to increase your conversions. 23% of the users will abandon your shopping cart if they have to create a user profile. And I know I am one of those 23%. Okay? A lot of you guys are too, right? We, we hate creating accounts. If we can connect with Facebook and do it, do it all the time. If we can do guest checkout, do it all the time. Free shipping bars. Amazon have spoiled us. Right? We love getting two-day shipping, especially when it's free. Five-day shipping is terrible, but paying for shipping is the absolute worst. So having a ship free shipping bar um, on, your, on your store is just an easy, easy way to reduce cart abandonment. Forrester's study shows that 44% of the online shoppers who are abandoning your cart are doing so because of shipping. All right? Soon, two-day shipping is going to become a standard. So if, you, if you're doing shipping, make that... You know, build it into your margins and offer it. Timer bars with discounts works absolutely wonders. We do it on our site all the time. It's a continuous sale going on. Um, it, increase, it basically doubles the conversion from our pricing to checkout page. On all of our products you're going to go, you're going to see this timer bar. And the other thing it, it helps us avoid is, uh, is people who see a discount field and they leave to go and find a coupon and then come back. It completely skews all of, your, uh, all of your stats. And also, in some cases, you're going to end up paying affiliate fees or what have you. Having this, we can still offer discounts and reduce card abandonment. There's a lot, a lot of tactics. Hopefully, some of these will help you increase your uh, conversion and reduce card abandonment. Here's a list of all the tools if you missed any of them. And yeah, just continuously test, tweak things, and improve. Thank you very much. So uh, I left some time for questions. If you guys have any questions, this was a lightning talk. So yeah, go ahead, Scott. Uh, yeah, my question is, uh, you just mentioned the timer bar uh, coupons. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a tool for that, or do you install that to provide? You know, so timer bar. Question is, is there a tool to do the timer bar? There wasn't, so I built it, and then had had the dev team build it into Optin Monster. So now we're using that, and a lot of the WordPress plugins website that you're going to go are all using that because. It just pure simple works. Right. So the question is, uh, the low FOMO notifications coming up that's saying so and so bought the product is that real? Absolutely. So yeah. So the way so the way it works, there's two ways it works. 
One, it, uh, it captures all the transactions that are happening on your site. Use FOMO. Uh, the way they work is they integrate with your e-commerce provider. Okay, so as the transactions are happening, it, it keeps a record of it, and it shows that, right? The way use proof works is this script doesn't integrate with any of your providers. It basically captures any form that's being submitted on your site. So it practically works with everything, right? So if a form gets submitted, they mark that, and they have the user's name and email, and using the email and the IP, they would either show the map or they would show the photo if your photo is connected to Gravatar or Google Photos or what have you with that email address. So they're 110% they're real. Now, one thing that you, that you would see, different people are using different things, and this is the tactic, is the time that it shows on there. All right, so if you're a high volume store, you're gonna show so-and-so signed up 30 seconds ago, so-and-so signed up two hours ago, right? But if you're a low volume store, it would, it would show so-and-so signed up recently. So instead of showing the actual timer, it would show recently. Um, and recent could be however you define recent. Do you have a web hook that works with your product that shows how you can like configure programs uh, like Zapier or ConvertKit? Uh, so the question is, do we have a, a web hook for our product so it works with Zapier or ConvertKit? Absolutely. We have a Zapier integration. We also have a native integration with ConvertKit and 24 other providers. You know, it depends on your use case. So the question is, what would you avoid in the, in the things that have come up in the last several years? It really depends on what you're trying to do. Like, if you have the people and, and the means to do a Facebook bot, do it. If you don't have it, then don't do it. Don't do anything half-assed, basically. If whatever you're doing, commit to it. Like, don't put a live chat thing up there and not have any live chat agents, right? That's pointless. So what, whichever technique you're using, go all in. Otherwise, don't do it. But what's my favorite book for what? Um, oh yeah, so my, some of my most favorite books, Hard Things About Hard Things is a really, really good book. Traction, really, really good book. So, yeah. Does the money back guarantee increase any other risk like return rate or whatnot? Actually, no. Uh, somebody who is going to return your product is going to return it anyways. What the money-back guarantee does, it gives you terms of services to protect yourself. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a chargeback. Right? If you don't offer that, it's pretty simple for us to log into our Amex account or City Card account, whatever account you have, and say, dispute this transaction. The goods was not you know, satisfying. And pretty, eight out of ten times, you're going to lose that case. Uh, in most cases, like 99% of the time, you're going to lose that case unless you have a very, very good reason to win. So just offering that is going to overcome the objection of, am I safe? And that's it. And stick to that. We, like, we have a 14-day money-back guarantee, but if you, even if you come back in 30 days later and say, I want a refund, we'll refund it. Because we don't want to deal with chargebacks. If you're not happy, we don't want, it. We don't, we don't want your money. Any other questions? Uh, traction and hard things about hard things. Life hacking one is uh, power of habits. Really good one. Any other questions? If not, then thank you very much, guys.